G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now this is the Aoshima Honda Hawk. Yep, CB400N. It's a 112 scale kit and it is a group build, well, for my club. Real people, not those fake people on the internet that you never meet, you know, imaginary and all the rest of it, and everyone posts pictures, which obviously photoshopped and faked. No, no, this is real. This is modelling. Not that we've had much real club meetings or anything this year due to the vile rust, but we did manage to get together for a few and this kit is one you take home and you all have a chance to build it. Well, not everyone does it. Most do. I think we had 13 entries in the end of it. But um, everybody has to build the same model. You can only use the plastic in the kit. That's it. You can change the decals. You can paint it any way you like. You can do anything to it. And the trouble is when they say you can do anything to it, I tend to have crazy ideas. Last year, it was a little um, 1700 scale destroyer and my anything to it was to make a diorama with a kraken eating the ship. Yep. <laughs> One second place though, so there you go. Never mind. Anyhow, this Honda Hawk, right? Now, when I got the kit, and um, well, I got the kit out actually, because I always leave it to about the last minute. It was one week before the competition has to be you know, done, where we have to present our models. And as usual, I leave it all to the last minute. So there it is, the last week of competition. I pulled out the kit, and lo and behold, Bass the Cat, bless her furry little soul, she took an interest. So, I let her build the model. Yep, cats can build kits. <laughs> Want to see more? Alright, roll the music. <laughs> So, what do you get in the kit? Well, it's rather nice, actually. It's um, it's not an expensive kit. I, I know the club bought them bulk for like a couple of shekels each, you know, uh, which is not much. Now you get these, um, it's nicely sort of presented where everything is um, pushed down and held into shape. That's because half the box is empty. <laughs> There's only about four or five sprues. There's not much to this kit. So, um, you get this little blurb here. It's all very interesting. You actually get a helmet in the kit if you want to use it. There's no figure, but you can um, basically position a helmet on the seat. Instructions? Well, they're all basically in Nipponese. There, there's um, very little English, unless, you know, just the name here, that sort of thing. But essentially, your entire instructions, uh, it, it's it's all in that language. And you can see these kits have been seen on the shelf while they're a bit... Um, Bit faded. Now sprues, you get um, not a lot of sprues. One, two, three, four, well five, including the clear. Uh, you do get rubber tyres, which are lovely, and they're they're really firm, and they take a bit to um, to fit onto the wheels, and that's that's good. So they're not exactly going to heat up and fall off. You get some rubber tubing, which you can use for running the spark plug leads and the brake lights, which I helped out Basque with later. Now, interestingly, each sprue is a different colour. Yep. Now, of course, there's nothing on there now because she's already built the kit, but um, use your imagination. <laughs> Here's some photos that might uh, give you a look. This sprue was basically for the motor and the wheels, and it's sort of supposed to, I suppose, look like dull aluminium, and that's fine. Uh, whereas this sprue was for the shiny bits like the forks and uh, the, um, the shockies, shock absorbers at the back, and, the, um, of course, the pipes, and they all needed to be a nice shiny chrome. Now, this chrome was actually very good, very good. It was, um, you know, usually I'd sort of strip things off and do that sort of thing. But as the cat was building it, it was built out of the box using the plastic colour. You had uh, black parts, which are basically for lots of the uh, the working gear and bits and pieces and the seat and that sort of thing. Uh, we'll go through that in a sec. And then you had the coloured sprue, red in this case, for the body. But Bass didn't want a red bike, so we painted it a different colour. Each of the bags, well, each of the sprues were in their own bag, which is rather nice. So everything was bagged up very nicely. That's the, um, the sprue there with the clear parts. And uh, more about those in a sec. So basically, that was about it. That's, that's sort of what's in the box. Now the build is pretty straightforward. And basically it's all on this one three-page sort of folded out spread. Although you do have a little bit of finishing off some final details here on the last page. But essentially, that's your build, and uh, it's all concertinated out there. You start with the wheels, 
Now they're pretty easy, they glue together nicely. As I said, the rubber tires are nice and firm, they go on. Be very careful you don't glue this little part up here, which is part of the uh, brake mechanism for the rear wheel. And you don't want to glue that just yet, because um, you have to connect that up to a, um, a rod system later on. So um, it could be a bit tricky. Although the wheels will rotate in the, um, in the frame. So, you know, next you build up the frame. And um, the frame's rather nice. It um, fits very positively. There was minimal cleanup here. Basque had no trouble at all cutting things off the sprue with her fingernails, with her claws, and I helped her a little bit with the sanding. It was fairly easy. You've got to be careful here when you put the swing arm on the back here. It's um, a little bit fiddly to get in there to sort of get your head around. But you kind of poke it through and push things apart, and it, it eventually jams in. Then it holds in very tightly. So. Um, that works out well, although it's a bit frustrating at first, you think, this thing's not going to fit in this bloody thing. Now the motor was so well engineered, this was the sort of dull aluminium type parts. Now, normally when you're cutting chromed parts and painted parts in a kit, you know, all your sprue points where you're cutting off, you're going to remove that chrome plating. So then you, you have to sort of, you know, find something like a, I've got a Molotov pen, and that allows me to touch things up. But... This was so clever. All the sprue joints, all the parts that you had to clean up, get covered up by the next part. So you join the top and the bottom of the motor part together and where the sprue joints are get covered up by the side panels. The back of the side panels get covered up by other parts that come in. And so it goes. And any joints on the top get covered with the top when you put the cylinders on. It was so clever. Even down to the little carburetors, the tiny little carburetors, which are in two halves and they take a bit of clean up, but both the ends are where all your sanding off and cleaning off of the um, the sort of dull dull aluminium sort of finish. And that all gets hidden in the model later on, gets hidden up inside the motor and then when you put on the body panels later. So very clever. You, you can build that whole motor up and leave it in the anodized sort of, or the pretend aluminium, and it looks fine, and then just give it a dull coat or whatever you want, and you don't have to paint it, which is terrific, because Bass does not know how to use an airbrush, and she does not have opposable thumbs, so she can't hold a paintbrush. Best she can do is put the paint in her mouth and spit it on the model. More of that later. Anyway, after you've done that, you um, basically put the motor in. It fits in fairly well. You've just got to watch the connections. connects to the front of the frame, and then it connects basically um, at the bottom here, of this whole business underneath where you've got and this bit you have to watch out for you've got your chain so your chain goes into the motor so you've got to be careful with that it sort of makes more sense once you do it the the, the draw the drawings are not that good sometimes in explaining what's going on but if you check a few reference photos if you don't know much about bikes i mean luckily i've had lots of bikes in my life so i was able to give bass lots of advice as to where things click in but um if you don't know much about bikes then best to find some reference photos and there's plenty online for this i found quite a lot chain guard goes on and here they say to put the spark plugs on but we didn't we left those off i advised bass not to do that i helped her with those later i put those on right at the end and there's a bit of a trick to those i'll show you back wheel finally goes in uh, along with the shock absorbers now they're all chromed um, which is sort of very zingy but um, a dark wash in those and you really bring out the springs and they look great, so not worried about that. Now the pipes, the pipes are made up in two halves each, which you think, oh dear, being chromed up parts, it's going to be a lot of sanding and you wreck it. But again, I assume we've been very clever about this. The way they fit together and where the sprue joins are gets hidden down on the inside pretty well up against the frame. So again, you can pretty well put these chrome parts on without needing to touch up. But if you need to, you can use a Molotov pen. Now, what's that? This is a liquid chrome pen from Molotov. Now, it's not Molotov like the buddy, um, the cocktails and, you know, the, the Russian guy. It's got a W in there. See, it's W. So, M for Molo <laughs> and W for To. So, M-O-L-T-O-W, Molotov. Okay? Now, these things are the best, best painting tools since sliced bread. Not that you use sliced bread to paint, but you get a perfect chrome finish. Now, it's not good for painting big areas. I don't think you can paint your whole model in them, no. Although you can buy the paint that goes in these in a big bottle and then put it in your airbrush. It's a lacquer-based paint as far as I can tell. But being in this little dispenser, you can just simply touch. It takes one stroke. You simply touch on a part 
and and being lacquer it levels and it smooths out and it disappears into the chrome you will never pick where it's been touched up there are only a couple of spots in this whole model where i did need to use the pen and where i've done it even i can't remember because it does such a good job so these are worth getting. They come in different sizes, so you can get them from very fine up to about, I think this is a 4mm one, which suits my needs better because I'm not going to be doing any fine work with it. I'm just going to be touching up sprue joints. One trick with it is once you've opened it, once it's brand new and you've opened it and you've let the chrome paint run down into the nib, always leave it horizontal. Never store it straight up and down because the chrome paint will fall out and then it'll also dry in, the, um, in that acrylic nib there okay and then it'll never work again so you have to throw it away get another one <laughs> so yeah store it horizontally so that tip remains wet so moving on you put the foot pegs onto the little uh, little side plates here and a bit annoying that you can't position them up because that means your pillion pegs will be stuck out and quite often your pillion pegs it's nice to have them up because you know you, you might only have the rider so um, you know most most bikes when they're sitting at rest the pillion pegs are up now they're not they're not down you know you're not expecting someone to jump on the back well you could be I suppose you could be although I don't think you're going to pick up with this little rice burner because <laughs> quite frankly like someone said to me wouldn't pull the skin of a rice pudding girls bike sorry girls I know there's a lot of girls out there actually ride very powerful motorcycles so that's not a good thing to say anyway <coughs> getting away from that let's not work this channel up too much um, <laughs> you get in trouble with that. Um, crow pipes, yep. Crow pipes goes on your um, little kickstand, uh, not kickstand, kickstart, kickstart. Yeah, the kickstart goes in, which is rather quaint. I don't think the Australian bikes had the kickstart because when I found photos locally here of this, my reference, um, there, there was no kickstart. So we had electric, we had electric starter. Now then, you assemble both sides in. They go, they go on pretty easily. They go on very well. There's no real problem. The pipes fit nicely into the front of the motor. Um, and then they have a mounting point here at the back. They sit fine. The only thing you got to do is make sure you space them out. Now, when you put your pipes on, immediately, immediately, do not pass go, go straight to jail, that sort of thing. Go to this part here, 21, okay? Because I would have normally put my chrome pipes on, well, instructed Bass to do it. Let's face it, Bass built this model. And then, you know, position them sort of nicely. But no, don't, because this is part here, spaces the pipes out. So if you don't put that in straight away, you're going to have a devil of a job later on because you might have got your pipes too wide or too narrow. So that part goes in and actually sets the exact width for those pipes because actually the pipes have a little like ledge built into them which goes inside that because that's basically, that's I think your sump protector. So um, yeah, make sure you go straight to here. Part 21 will space your pipes out and you can't get it in unless the pipes are correctly spaced. So that's just something to watch for. Now you've got your little side plates and everything. Now I wouldn't put them in. You could sort of do a test fit, but be careful. I test fit mine, and they fitted so well that when I actually pulled them off, I broke the pins because I mean I want to take them off for painting. So if if, if I was you and you were me and and what have you and you were Basque, <laughs> leave off those parts because obviously you want to paint them um, or paint them before they go on. This thing, your um, indicator rubber mounts go on along with a little chrome handrail that goes on that's all kind of easy now this back part here now look it seems in the kit they're supposed to sit slightly proud and then if you do a dry fit with your tank and your side panels they don't fit together they don't line up so have a look at that i would suggest actually re-drilling out those holes so this whole part can push down flat and sit hard up against the uh, the mount underneath okay and when you've got that in then your tank slides down a bit further and your side panels click in nicely and the whole thing joins up the panels much better so just have a look at that yourself if you're building the kit because yeah i um i was really disappointed that i couldn't get that happen but as it was well bass was disappointed <laughs> um it didn't matter for bass spike because the decision we made shortly okay handlebars they go in again you're going to have to paint the grips and dull them down if you want it to look nice. Just sort of one of the few things you'd have to paint. Most of this kitchen you can build it straight out of the box. The um, chrome surround for the headlamp. Now, yep, by the time you have cut off the nibs and sanded this round smooth, you will need something like the Molotov pen to touch that up. That was one of the few parts of, well, the chrome can't be hidden. The, um, the headlamp goes in, but what you could do if you've got yourself a chrome pen is try and chrome out the inside of that. Uh, well, actually, it'd be inside of this part, 24. Chrome out the whole of the inside of 24 so it's nice and shiny. Then when your clear part goes on the front, you've got a nice shiny reflective surface behind it. Otherwise, it's going to look a bit dull because that's black. 
as black plastic. So if you can, slap a whole lot of silver paint in there. Make a world of difference. My clear parts, I only put them on with PVA white wood glue. And the reason is, one, you can wipe it off with water if you slop it. So that's kind of handy. But also, it dries absolutely clear. And it does give you a little bit of wriggle time because you put it in, you've got time to rotate parts and fit them how you want. Then run around with a uh, wet tissue or cotton bud and you clean off the gun. And when it all dries, no glue marks at all. It looks terrific. You've got the little indicator lights here. Now they needed to be painted and for those I used some Tamiya Clear Orange. And that worked really well. Now initially I just painted them on the inside. Help Bask out because obviously you can't use a paintbrush. Uh, but then Bernard, Bernard had made his kit and done a much better job of mine. Here's Bernard's point. <laughs> and um, Bernard actually paints his clear on the outside of the plastic part. Which I'd, I'd never known. I always painted the inside. So I ended up touching them up and painting the outside and they look really good. So there you go. If you haven't got it, the Tamiya clears are really good because they are exactly what they say. They're for putting on clear parts and they colorize the clear part but still leave it translucent. They are terrific. Your front fender goes on. Now the fender in the kit, the uh, the mudguard, right? It's chromed. And on some of the overseas bikes, and certainly probably the bike they use for reference, it's chromed. But we found on a lot of the Australian bikes that had been painted, and Bernard knew that, his bike, his blue bike, that had been painted. So you can make a choice here as to whether you're going to leave that chrome or you're going to paint that part. And then you've got your little brake calipers. They go on. They're quite nice. One little trick to do with those, which I didn't do, I forgot, is you could touch up the bolts. If you've got one of those multi pens, you could tap it there on all the bolts and give your bolts little chrome heads. And then the seat goes on and the handlebars go in with a speedometer. So it's probably a good idea to um, paint the indicator lights on that binnacle, which aren't that hard because they've, they've made little um, scalloped out areas. You just literally drop the paint in and it'll conform to the little square shapes or rectangular shapes. And then put the decals on for the um, for the dials, for the speedometer and the rev counter. Get that out of the way now because once this is all built up, it's going to be a lot more fiddly to try and do that and you'll have less access. So do that before you put it all together. The seat, again, I wouldn't put the seat on because I'm going to be basically painting the parts for Basque. So again, I'd leave that to the absolute last minute. And again, if you do your trial fit and you haven't managed to push that back part all the way down, then the seat doesn't sit quite right, which then pushes the tank forward and the whole thing goes completely out of alignment. At least that's what happened to us. And one of the last steps here is indicator lights, which get again painted with Tamiya Clear Orange and they get clicked in there. One trick I did was I used the Molotov chrome pen on the back of the black plastic here. So when the, I did the same, the same back here as well, wherever it was, wherever we did the indicator lights here. Same over here with the indicator lights. The, um, by putting the chrome again behind the clear part, makes it more shiny, makes it shine through. So um, that works really well. The um, stop lamp, that's red. And again, using Tamiya Clear Red for that one, worked really well. And again, chroming behind it so it's nice and shiny. And your number plate goes on and then they say, well, you can build your helmet if you want to. I didn't build my helmet. And then they talk about the um, basically the brake, brake lines and where they go. Now, Strictly speaking, at least the kits that I've seen down under, they don't go like that. They don't all stick up in the air and go round around in circles. So um, when I eventually got around to doing the brake lines for Basque, I um, did them as per photos I'd found and how I remember bikes. Although, strictly speaking, they've got a left and a right here for the front brakes. It's dual discs on this bike, which is pretty good, which should all go up and only go to one side. And then on the other side, you should have a a lead running around underneath the tank which is basically for your clutch because your clutch is on the left right and the right lever is for your front brake and your rear brake gets pushed down by a brake pedal which we put on somewhere back there I forget where so that's about it so the bike goes together then you've just got decals now my decals are very yellow they had yellowed out a lot so um, what you might need to do is put these out in the sunshine get some UV light on them and you might be able to get some yellow out it didn't matter with my build, and it didn't matter at all because of best decision of how we're going to paint the bike. So let's look at that now. I started with some black Stein RS to prime, and that gives a lovely satin finish, but it's also very hard being a polyurethane. And I needed that because I was going to add some rust effects, and I did that by putting splodges of oranges and reds, then hairspray sealing it, and covering it with a top coat, which Basque chose as blue. Once that was all done, a little bit of water and a toothpick and you chip and scratch away until you get the desired effect that you want. I made a funny number plate ratty, so it would be quite obvious this was a uh, 
<laughs> not a show bike, that's for sure. But there it is, it all got put together and the scratch and the chips looked really good. I just had to add the decals. But then also I needed to put on those um, brake lines and the spark plug lines. And I sort of did most of those off the uh, bike on the sprue until I could uh, fit them on the bike and make it a lot easier. Then it was just a matter of putting a flat coat on and she was ready to uh, be muddied up. Yep, Bass had a lot of fun splashing mud all over this bike. And there is the final result. There she is, all nice and wrecked and broken. As you can see, the um, seat's torn up there. Yes, Baskers had a go there, pulling too hard on the strap, and it's ripped back and torn the vinyl on the seat. Uh, there's mud everywhere that Bask flung all over it. She was very good at that. Yeah, so she was very helpful at doing the muddy parts of the kit. The um, the motor is actually a lot dirtier than it appears here. It's um, more the reflections of the lights here, making it look very bright. You, you'll see it better in the final photos, which I'll do in the montage at the end. But um, yeah, really, for um, the kind of kit it is, oh, you see the bad join there. That's basically because, yeah, this um, this part, as I said, is too high. It really needs to come down lower, which means this part can rotate correctly and fit. Then the seat can sit lower and the tank can come back. It all One thing affects another. That part being high throws all the other rest of them out. But there you go. But overall, Bass did a lovely job of building the kit, and then I really enjoyed doing the painting and the weathering. So getting all those, uh, getting all those effects, it was a lot of fun. And the whole thing got made in about four days. It's one of the fastest builds ever. I mean, it takes me four years to build some of my ships because I'm so bloody slow. But this kit got put together in four days. So um, yeah, the painting was only like I was painting it on the Friday. That's when I put the blue down and then I was doing the chipping and all the rest of it Friday night and then Saturday morning to do all the uh, the mud with Basque. So um, thanks to her diligent help, we managed to get this model done and out the door. And who knows how we'll do in competition. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, we enjoy building our model and that's that's the thing. You know, that's what it's really all about is do you get pleasure out of the hobby? If you're just building for competition, well, that's the thing you can do, I suppose. I don't think you'd be having much fun because that'll be very stressful and you're basically turning into a job. Okay, that's what you want. But for me, it's not a job. It's something I do in my spare time to have fun and relax. And this is what I like to do. So I hope you like that. That is my Aoshima um, with the help from Basque. Don't forget she built it. <laughs> 112 scale Honda CB400N Hawk. And uh, we'll end this video with a bit of music, a bit of toe tapping music, and um, you can see some nice photos that I did which show in better detail all the work that went into it. All right, that's it. Goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Denny. <laughs>